I call the honourable member, Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I, I speak to rise to the government's tax bill, uh, part of the government's budget that was introduced this afternoon. Uh, the government's budget, uh, the framework for the government's budget was what I've called borrow, cut and sell. Uh, so the government has increased borrowings uh, very significantly. It has cut spending on programs that ordinary New Zealanders like and benefit from, like working for families, like the KiwiSaver. And the government's proposing to privatise uh, government assets uh, in order to get some money from the privatisation to pay for future capital expenditure. It is a borrow, cut and sell budget. A borrow, cut and sell budget is not exactly an inspirational budget. And, and I think uh, when you look at the numbers and the economic forecast, it shows how much of a failure this budget will be. Um, the, the previous speaker, Mr Parker, uh, referred to uh, Table 1.2, the economic forecasts in the budget economic and fiscal update, <clears throat> which has the long-term implications of this budget and no doubt others. And it is, in, I think, for those of us who are concerned about the imbalances in the New Zealand economy, which is clearly not the government, but those of us who are concerned about the imbalances in the New Zealand economy, um, it is notable that the 2015 forecast has a current account balance of minus 6.9% of GDP, minus $16.8 billion, the current account deficit uh, in the forecast in 2015. So if the if the government has, uh, has criticised the performance of the economy in previous governments by saying that it was, uh, a, it was a, <clears throat> a borrowing fuel consumption boom, um, which was the critique the government's made, um, then they're not changing it. Uh, if that's the government's critique of the position of what, how the economy was previously managed, further down the track, our net international investment position, and that's the difference between what we owe the world and what the world owes us, is still minus 85% of GDP in 2015 under the magical transformational budget that the government has introduced. So if the government's critique has been that it was a debt fuel consumption boom, and there was some truth in that when you looked at what happened in the housing sector, um, there was considerable truth to that, their changes aren't going to do anything about New Zealand's current account deficit or its net international investment position. Um, and the reason for that is that the, the kind of changes they're bringing in actually go backwards. Uh, one of the problems we have in New Zealand is our savings record, and the government is proposing to reduce the incentive to save. Uh, the government is proposing to take $2.6 billion, $2.6 billion away from KiwiSaver contributions. Uh, this was part of the incentive for people to save. We're all the people who are, who are members of KiwiSaver, and some of us are members of KiwiSaver in this House. We're going to have the contribution from the government cut. It's going to be all KiwiSaver accounts across the country. Um, so they're going to lose. The people will lose $10 a week that previously uh, went into the KiwiSaver account. That was an incentive to encourage people to save. Now, the government has argued <clears throat> that what's the point of borrowing overseas in order to just put money into KiwiSaver accounts? What's the point of borrowing just to, to apparently put into saving? The point is that, according to Treasury, we get a 40 per cent additional savings as a result of the KiwiSaver. That is, it is, has a multiplier effect. The, the incentives that are in there produce a multiplier effect in terms of private savings. Now, <laughs> and, and, and Mr Parker says you could be say they're borrowing for the tax cuts, and I'll come to that. But on the issue of savings, KiwiSaver actually has a multiplier effect in terms of private savings, and that's why it's different to the Cullen Fund. Now, I've, I've, I've agreed with Bill English when he said that uh, we should take a break from contributions to the Cullen Fund while we're running a deficit. I can see the logic of that. However, KiwiSaver has a different logic because of the multiplier effect that we're getting from those contributions. And there's another part of it, which is the culture of savings. KiwiSaver was turning around the culture of savings in New Zealand, but this government has now, is it twice or is it more, interfered with the basic settings of KiwiSaver. They are undermining the confidence that people have in the savings culture that's building around KiwiSaver. The reason why that's important is because a country that does not save will eventually lose control of its assets. It's just a simple matter of fact. If we continue not to save, then sooner or later other people will own the country because slowly we flog off assets or we increase debt in order to cover the fact that we don't save. So changing the savings culture, which KiwiSaver was designed to do, and 
There were arguments about the design of KiwiSaver, but it was certainly working. Um, they are interfering with the change of culture around savings, which is one of the things that we actually were trying to achieve. And it is hard to see how the changes to KiwiSaver are consistent with all of the government's rhetoric around changing the savings culture in New Zealand. I think it's also important for people to realise that <clears throat> you're going to end up paying for this. This is actually a tax increase. Uh, the government doesn't want to sell it like that, but that's what it is. Because when they're going to direct employers to increase their contributions to KiwiSaver, the employers are on the record as saying they intend to take it out of wage increases. So instead of getting a wage increase, you will get an increase in your employer's contribution to KiwiSaver. So you will pay for your employer's contribution to KiwiSaver as well as the increase in your employee contribution to KiwiSaver. It is effectively an increase in tax. It is a drop in the take-home pay of workers in New Zealand in order to pay for this cut to KiwiSaver. Now, and as was alluded to earlier, why, why are we in this fiscal deficit position? Well, there are a number of contributors, and to be fair to the government, they have, they've, they've been living in a world where there have been some really wild events have put enormous pressure on the government's books. But it's also true that some of it is of the government's own making. The changes in income tax rates that the government introduced, the so-called tax switch, was not fiscally neutral. It's funny that the government talks about the tax switch being broadly fiscally neutral. When you look at the government's own figures in the 2010 budget, over four years it cost a billion dollars, the so-called broadly, uh, broadly fiscally neutral tax switch. Now, if I told someone, well, broadly zero is broadly equivalent to one billion, they might think I was, you know, off my rocker. If I said, well, broadly, you know, zero, something fiscally neutral is broadly the same as something costing a billion dollars. Uh, when you look at the government's own tables in the budget from 2010, they are in black and white. We can show them to you that the government's so-called fiscally neutral tax switch cost, according to the government, a billion dollars over four years. It was not broadly fiscally neutral. It broadly cost a billion dollars in lost revenue um, when you look at the whole balance of the tax shift. But that was only in theory. <laughs> in practice, it's cost a lot more than that because in practice, the GST take has dropped. Um, now, for some good reasons. Uh, you know, the fact that people are savings more is a good thing. Um, but the government's GST increase has not covered the loss in income tax. So, in fact, not only, not only was it not broadly fiscally neutral at the beginning, in spite of what the government says, like that's, you know, the government's only a billion dollars wrong, what's a billion dollars between friends? But since then, it's actually got worse. Uh, because the GST take has, has dropped. So in order to cover this huge fiscal hole in the budget, because the government gave tax cuts, most of which went to people like the people in this room who earned more than $100,000, the people in this room did really well out of the tax cuts. Pretty much everyone sitting in this room was a major beneficiary of the tax cuts. Um, so the people in this room did really well out of the tax cuts, but the, the, the cost of them has to be covered somewhere. <coughs> And the way it's going to be covered is ordinary workers are going to effectively have a tax increase because they're going to have to increase the contribution to KiwiSaver from their own salary and then from any potential wage increases they may have otherwise got. So that is not a tax shift. That's a tax swindle, and there's no question about that. It is, in fact, the tax switcheroo, as I've called it. It's poorly it was poorly designed and poorly timed. Mr Speaker, the government has missed the opportunity for transformational change in this economy. They haven't had a price on carbon. Instead, we're subsidising carbon. This government's giving $2 billion to greenhouse polluters. How, that, how are you going to explain that to your kids, Mr Bennett? How are you going to tell them, oh, yeah, we gave $2 billion to greenhouse polluters, so I'm really sorry about the fact that the planet's up shit creek because we subsidise greenhouse pollution. What a brilliant government strategy. Not only are we $2 billion further in deficit because you're subsidising pollution, but our kids have to live with an out-of-control climate because idiots decided that they'd subsidise greenhouse pollution. How about a price to make water use more efficient? How about something that would actually be transformational in the economy instead of business as usual? How about making sure that we drive capital into the productive sector by using a capital gains tax excluding the family home instead of money going back into the housing market, which is where it's going to go because there's not proper tax signals? The Savings Working Group said half of the increase in house prices, 2001-2007, was because of the way that the tax system is structured to encourage 
people to speculate in housing. So people cannot afford to buy housing because the tax system encourages it. Mr Speaker, this budget is a borrow, cut and sell budget. It's not a transformational budget and we're going to live to regret it. I call 